Hey, how you doing? It's Mr. Clipper with Key Economic Concepts. We've got a tough one. Here we go. We're talking about monopolies and price discriminating monopolies. You ever wonder why on a free response, the question always says, this is a non-price discriminating monopoly. They've got to tell you or else you can give them different answers and draw different graphs because there's two different types. Now we're talking about a perfectly price discriminating monopoly over there, but before we do that, let's look at a regular monopoly. Here's what you already know, so join me. The demand is downward sloping like all markets, right? When the price is high, people buy less. Price is low, people buy more, more. But there's a marginal revenue that is below it. It is not equal to demand. We talked about this before in a different video. Here's why. To sell another unit, the firm has to lower the price of the next unit and the units it would have sold at a higher price. So the additional revenue that these monopolies get is not the price of the next unit. It's the price of the next unit minus the money they could have made by selling the price at a higher price for previous units. Did you get that? The point is marginal revenue is less than demand. That's a concept. Marginal cost looks like this. Go to where you're going to produce, where MR equals MC. There's your quantity Q1, and there's your price P1 for monopoly. Perfect. In fact, I'm going to draw an ATC here and up. This one's making profit, an area right there. Perfect. Done. Now, how is that different than this? A perfectly price discriminated monopoly. Well, here we go. Well, of course we're going to get a demand curve done, but, and here's the big moment, demand is not greater than marginal revenue, right? The demand equals the marginal revenue. Why? Well, they don't have to lower the price of the previous units, right? To sell another unit, a price discriminated monopoly lowers the price to the next unit, done. The other person, the person who paid a higher price, ends up paying that higher price still. So they don't have to lower the price of previous units. So if they sell another unit, they lower the price of the next unit, sell to the next person, they charge different people different prices. Demand equals marginal revenue. Well, marginal cost looks the same, it always does. And I'm going to draw an ATC, boop, down, and back up. ATC looks like this. I have three questions for you. Pay attention. Here they are. I want you to tell me where is the price. I want you to tell me where is consumer's surplus. And then I want you to tell me where is the profit. Just by looking at this graph, price, consumer surplus, profit, good luck, pause the video, we'll see how you do. How'd you do? You think you got it? All right. Well, before we start doing these things, we need a quantity. And that's an easy one. MR equals MC. Every firm produces the same quantity to maximize profit. There's your quantity. Now let's do the hard stuff, the price. Hmm, price is going to be nowhere and everywhere. The price, although you want to put it here, dot, dot, over, that's not true. And the reason why, remember, they're discriminating. One person who's willing to pay, let's say, $100, they pay $100. Another person who's willing to pay $95, they pay $95. Another person who's doing for $80, $80, they're paying $80. So I can't put a price over here because the price is not set at one spot. It's multiple different prices. Sorry, trick question. Price, can't put it on there. How about consumer surplus? Well, it's right nowhere. There is no consumer surplus. Seriously? Seriously. The people who are willing to pay 100, how much they pay? 100. People who are willing to pay 95 paid 95. People who are willing to pay 80 paid 80. No consumer surplus. Sorry, trick question. How about profit? It's there. It's right there. Do you see it? Let's look. When I produce this quantity, bam, down to ATC and over, that gives my average total cost of producing this quantity. I sold this unit for this price, there's my average total cost. This unit for that price, average total cost. This whole area, bam, 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 is profit right there. Now, compare the two. Profit, boom. Why do you price discriminate? Because it's going to give you more profit. Now, another little question, little trick here. What about quantity? What can you say about quantity for this one? Well, it's greater. Right? Quantity is greater than it was here in this situation. Right? This is the quantity, this is socially optimal quantity, this is the quantity for monopoly, it's less. But in this situation, they're producing where demand equals marginal cost, they're actually producing the allocatively efficient amount. They're producing the amount society wants, except they're overcharging everybody and charging them a higher price than they normally would at equilibrium in perfect competition. That makes sense? The price is different spots, consumer surplus, there's none, profit is bigger. That's price discrimination. Till next time.